Okay, hi everyone. So uh, today we have a Q and A session on CPA 2024 uh, evolution. My name is Shripal Jain. I'm a qualified chartered accountant and a licensed US CPA. Right. So today we'll be discussing. As you know, there are a lot of changes which have come in CPA uh, from 2024 1st January, and why we are talking about 2024 and why is it so important for you to understand. So today's session, we'll be discussing more on that. Before that, I would want to kind of share some PPTs and uh, give you a glance of what is the CP evolution and uh, what, what are we actually basically talking in evolution, why, why the syllabus is changing and uh, where are we on that. I hope everyone is able to see the screen here on the YouTube. Yes, are you able to see the screen guys and also on the people who are there here. Just let me know if my screen is visible to everyone. Okay. Yep. Okay. Cool. So I think many of them are able to. So I'm just trying to get more confirmations there. Folks, are you able to see? Okay. Thank you. That's that's like a quick, good confirmation for us. So CP evaluation 2024 and what basically have happened and why these changes are coming. This is an extremely important session for you all to understand. See what basically happened in the US is many of the people in the US don't want to do accounting, all right? Uh, so there was a generation where people used to do accounting, tax, they used to work 17, 18 hours a day, all right? But that trend have automatically changed uh, since almost four to five years now in the US because most of them are not taking accounting as a field. So if you can see that in 2016, there was 19% fewer accounting graduate firms hiring. Right. Then in 2018, there were 29% fewer graduate firms hires. Right. So this is a research which have been done basically. So if you see the college accounting program enrollment in 2021, 54% of the accounting faculty have reported declining undergrad enrollments. So, sir, what is the reason? The reason is quite simple because people want to do coding. They want to go into technology. Uh, so a lot of those things are there, which are there in the student's mind. So they find accounting a bit boring and all those stuff. And I don't know, there are several other factors as well. But this was a research and this was a data that 54% decline was there in the undergrad enrollments. Right? So this is a significant decline if you see that. Now, what is a gap analysis? So they did a curriculum gap analysis. A survey was sent to over 1200 accounting department chairs. 317 responses were received. And those responses were like, are there accounting programs in the colleges? Are they teaching data analytics? Are they teaching IT audit? Are they teaching cybersecurity and more, right? Because that is where the demand is coming and that's where the corporates are hiring these days for these skill sets. So is our curriculum in AICPA having these three, four skill sets or not? So this is what was the analysis being done. And are we teaching that or not? Now see that. How many percentage of schools are covering each topic? Data analytics, I mean, majority, if you see that, 64% of the schools are covering data analytics. 40% were covering predictive analytics. System and organization controls were 23%. And digital acumen is 23%. Right? Because we want to see how today's students are, or do they actually embrace the technology or not? Right. So this was the gap analysis which was done. If you see that, interestingly, cybersecurity was 40%. IT audit is 63%. So IT, most of them, even in India, if you see Institute of Chartered Accountants of India, also have covered IT audit, IT governance, IT risk. So the percentages are almost to 40 to 50 to 60 percentage. If you see that, the range is closer to 40 to 40, 43%. Now, Evolving initial CPA licensure required requirements to build a future ready profession for a rapidly changing marketplace, all right? July, 2022 is the time when they thought that, okay, this content is completely outdated. The accounting curriculum has to embrace technology in their content. So what AICPA did was, yes, we need to bring technology because a lot of the students want to do technology. So either you will see the diminishing numbers or if you bring technology into the curriculum, your numbers will increase because many of the students were not enrolling. In fact, you will see in Dubai, uh, they have removed BCom itself. There is no bachelors of commerce in Dubai. There is actually entirely technology curriculum which has been incorporated in their bachelors. 
only in india we have bcom syllabus and that's why we are seeing lot of till now a lot of cpa firms are outsourcing their work to india because they are not getting accounting talent in the us because in other countries already technology have been brought heavily in the curriculum only in india we still have bachelor of commerce bachelors of i mean we have accounting and all those curriculum but technology is still not relevant or i would say have not been considered so much important in our under graduation programs as well now anyways in ai cp i have considered this and early 2023 they prepared the new cp exam blueprint right so that will be there from 1st january you will get the blueprint because as you know guys in cpa there are no study materials the study materials are prepared by samander becker wiley glime so these are all the review course providers so they prepare their study material based on the blueprint so this was a blueprint which will come from 1st january 2023 basis on this blueprint so this blueprint contains all the important topics which are there in the curriculum right and on that curriculum your study material is prepared by the review course providers because there is an independence requirement in cpa like in, in india icci itself prepares your study material and you get a study material from institute of chartered accountants of india but in cpa it doesn't happen like that there is an independence rule the uh, body which is conducting the examination cannot prepare the study material for that exam so study material is normally prepared by some review course providers they just give the blueprint they just tell you what are the topics which they will test in the exam they will not give any material for that and those topics which you need to see is that are the topics which are covered in the exam which are tested in your exam so this is what is your cp exam blueprint right january 2024 1st january coming next to next year right this is the expected launch of new cp exam now why are we talking about 1st january 2024 is because please understand the cp exam typically takes around uh 12 to 14 months right so even if i'm enrolling from 1st january 2023 i will still be in that border of will i be able to complete my cp exam by january 2024 if i don't complete it then what should i do what is my best option should i do afterwards should i do before what is it right because now technology is being added into the curriculum ai cp have done a research they have found out that this is a curriculum which is being liked by the corporates right so now what is the expected launch so how what are the subjects which is being covered what are the topics which are being covered so let's see what what are we talking here before that before i talk about the subjects and all those things some few important announcements which have come from nasba as you know guys cp exam happens entire year every day cp exams happen except for saturday and sunday right the exams is online it is in prometric you need to go to a prometric test center and give your cp exams like we have a lot of prometric test centers in hyderabad bangalore mumbai delhi and all right ahmedabad kolkata chennai right kerala so we have a lot of prometric test centers like that and the cp exams used to happen every day throughout the year except for saturday and sunday right but this year from 1st january 2023 the cp exams you see that they will be across all till november the exams will be held on every day except saturday and sunday but if you see that in december month uh, the cp exam will be only conducted till december 15 2023 there will be no cp exams which will be scheduled from november, uh, december 15 2023 to january 9 2024 because from 1st january there is a cp evolution 2024 right the new syllabus is coming the new curriculum is coming into the play and that is one of the reason why the exams are not being conducted in that particular timeline which is which is completely understandable right because there is a new exam structure which is coming up so it's not like in india right now what is now also ca students are wondering old syllabus ca new syllabus ca it doesn't happen like that in aicp right so they are very clear with what deadlines they are and what timelines they have so they have announced all these updates now again what happens here is now your testing will commence on january 10 2024 right the core sections will be available through march 26 2024 and the discipline sections will be on february 6 2024 i will explain you what is core and what is discipline because this is a completely new curriculum which is being getting added right then the most important announcement for the people who are already enrolled with samandar or who are planning to enroll with samandar for the cpa course it is very important for you all to understand is if you are writing any exam now right 
if you're writing any exam this year, you have an auto extension of 18 months. Now, what is this? Sir? See, previously, CPA has a rule, guys, people who are watching us. I'll tell you, there are four sections in CPA exam, right? Suppose I have written my CPA exam in the month of January. I get my result in the month of February. From January, you have 18 months of time to pass other three sections. Are you getting it? If you don't pass the other three sections within 18 months, right? The subject which you have passed also get lapsed. So strictly talking, guys, if I'm writing my exam in January 2023, right? So when will my last date of expiry will be? Anyone in the YouTube? So if I write my exam in January 2023, and my result comes in February, I have 18 months of time, right? To write the other three sections. If I don't pass the other three sections within 18 months of time, the subject which I passed will also get lapsed. So this rule is applicable only if you pass, right? If you don't pass, this rule doesn't apply at all. So now tell me if it is January, 2023, then what is the last date for 18 months, everyone? Yes. If I'm writing my exam in January, 2023, what is the last date for 18 months expiry? Yes, it's June 2024, right? So you are adding 18 months to it, right? So is it June or is it July? So what we are talking is depends when you are writing the exam. Are you writing on 1st January or are you writing on 30th January, right? So assuming that you're writing on 1st January 2024, right? So closer to that, June 2024, right? It will be closed. So July the you have a time. So that is an 18 months window. Now, what they are telling is if your scores unexpired sections, so by December 2023, if you have any outstanding sections, right? So for an example, I have passed the FAR exam. So there are four subjects in CPA. I have passed CPA FAR exam in the month of January, right? So I will be given an additional 18 months of time. So they are giving you additional 18 months of time as an extension from December 2023. Sir, why are they giving us free 18 months extension? So they are giving you a free 18 months credit extension because there is a new exam curriculum and all. So there are a lot of people whose scores can lapse. Yes or no? I mean, there are a lot of people who have passed the CP exam one section or two section. So their scores can lapse. If it is 18 months, this course can lapse in January next year. I mean, January 2024 or March 2024, right? So people whose scores are getting expired or are unexpired, right? Whose credits are not expired till January 1st, 2024 or on January 1st, 2024, you will have credit extension. So see there here, guys, what NASBA have said. So due to limited testing schedule, and delayed score releases in 2024, the CBT administration and executive directors committee of NASBA have recommended a policy to board of accountancy for consideration, which would allow candidates with CP examination credits on January 1st, 2024 to have such credit extended to June 30th, 2025. Are you getting it everyone? So we are talking about June 30th, 2025. So that means effectively you will have this year 12 months and 18 months extension. So you will have 30 months of time to pass your first exam. But to be honest, you can pass the CP exam within 10 to 11 months. With Simandar, if you study properly, if you go through our study lectures and all, you solve MCQs and Sims with Becker. I mean, that is more than sufficient. All, most of our CPA Simandar students have passed before 12 months. But in case if your score expiry and all are there, guys. So you will have 30 months of extension. Sir, how are you counting that 30 months extension? This year, 12 months, guys. And then on December, you will be given an additional 18 months extension from December 2023. So you will be given 18 months plus 12 months. 30 months is the rule. Anyone having any questions on this 30 months before I take about the CPA parts and all those stuff? Anyone having any doubts on extension of the credits? Anyone here, any questions on the credit extension? Because this was one of the popular questions which people ask me on Instagram, on LinkedIn, right? Sir, my score for FAR is expiring on 28th February, 2024. Am I eligible for extension? So if you can see that, yes, we shall. So June 30th, 2025 is the last date where they can extend. 
So if your score of FAR is expiring on 20th February 2024, Vishal Patel, your extend your credits will be extended to June 30th 2025. Are you getting it? So June 30th 2025 will be the last date of extension. Whichever month, whatever period you will pass and whatever score expiry is there, you will be given the maximum time is June 30th 2025. Right, the syllabus of 2023 will not be followed, Vinita. That's common sense. How can you follow the 2023 syllabus in 2024? Syllabus will not be extended, guys. Only the credit will be extended. Please understand that they are extending the credit because you can actually study the new syllabus and all those stuff. Right, so score lapse mean Pradhyani is if you don't pass the CP exam within the timeline, the other three sections. The score which you have passed will also get lapsed. So that means you should write the exam again. Right? So that was a rule of old CP exam. The new rule of CP exam is there is no 18 months window. For time being, there is 30 months window now. That is what I mean to say. Okay? Cool. So, sir, if I join, uh, say, so this is one uh, question here, which have come from the YouTube. Right? So... Uh, just a second, guys, so that I'm just reading it out. So if I join Simandar in July 2023, I gave my first exam in December 2023. Will I get credit extension up to June 2025? Yes, Ravi. You will get a credit extension till 2025, right? So again, sir, I'm left with only one section in 2024. Will our exam be held as per the old syllabus or it will be merged with new syllabus? 100% it will be new syllabus. If I'm starting my preparation for CP in January 2023, I may appear for my first exam in April 2023. In that case, how many months I'll have to clear my next three subject, Bhashya? So suppose you have written your first exam in April 2023, Bhashya, and you'll get your results in May 2023. From May 2023 to, July, to June 30th, 2025, you will have that many months as an extension. Are you getting it, Bhashyam? So till June 30th, 2025, you can clear your other three subjects. So that means what you are getting more time to pass the CP exam. But what is the most important thing is you must register now and at least write BEC exam because one exam you should write in old syllabus and that exam is getting changed like maximum. It is like majority of the changes are happening in BEC and that is why we are recommending not a lot of people to write in BEC. I mean, write the BEC exam. Now I'll just stop the uh, questions and all and just show you what is the course CPA three parts and what are the changes curriculum which are being added. As you know, guys, there are four subjects in CPA curriculum, all right? You have FAR, Audit, Reg, and BEC. So what AICPA is doing is you will have FAR, you will have Audit, you will have Tax. So what was there in your old syllabus will remain the same. FAR, Audit, Tax in the new syllabus also from 2024 will remain the same. But only thing is the fourth part, BEC, right, is having us elective subject there so there is a three electives which have come in BEC so what I am telling is in FAR audit and tax they have just added data analytics into their curriculum guys on digital acumen in FAR audit and tax so they are not changing a lot in the 2024 syllabus what is changing is the fourth section which is BEC business environment and concept that is getting split into three discipline guys so out of these three, you can select any one which you want. Now tell me, guys, if you want to make a career in tax, right, what is the sections you will select? So core three parts will remain consistent. You cannot select anything from the core. Core will remain the same. So these three subjects you will have to write mandatorily, financial, audit, and tax. Only the four subject, which is discipline, is there. Out of these three subjects, you can select any one which you want. Right. So this is more like specialization, guys. If I want to specialize in accounting, so I will select FAR, audit and tax. And most probably I will select uh, information systems and audit because technology is being added more in accounting and all. So I might select IT as my elective subject. So this will be my four subject. Sir, if I want to make my career in tax, so which subject will you select, guys? Just tell me this. Anyone in the YouTube? If you want to make a career in advanced tax, right? If you want to make a career in tax, so which subject which you uh, would you select, guys? Financial, audit, and tax will remain the same, right? 
what is the last subject which you will select here it will be tax compliances or planning because tax compliance planning is advanced tax guys so this is a new subject which is getting introduced from 1st january 2024 business analysis and reporting is nothing but guys they have just they have taken out all the difficult topics of par audit and tax and they are put into business analysis and reporting even the costing syllabus of uh, bc have been put into business analysis and reporting and that's why there was a big fight guys which i mentioned in my earlier webinars also there was a big fight between aicp and ima that costing have been made optional in the cp exam right because if you strictly tell guys i can select far audit and tax and i can select tax compliance and discipline and i can avoid business analysis and reporting so that means effectively i don't need to study costing and i can still pass the cp exam guys yes am i making sense there everyone do you understand that so business analysis or reporting is something which i can obviously leave in my electives from 1st january 2024 and i might actually skip costing completely right so that's why there was a big fight but aicp kind of went ahead with what they wanted as a curriculum and they feel that this is what it is right so the third subject comes is information systems and reporting now let's see what is this entire sections how is this model curriculum and all those stuff right so let's see in the far what all are the topics coming up guys so i am just taking you in the far subject so if you see that in far the financial statement remain the same select financial statement accounts remain the same select financial statement transactions financial statement everything is same guys in far only critical thinking have been added right financial data analytics have been added and digital acumen have been added guys these are the three topics which have been added in the far curriculum they have removed all the difficult parts of state local governmental nfps and also what they have done is the government accounting have been reduced substantially and that have been moved to your business analysis and reporting and they have added critical thinking financial data analytics and digital acumen in far and this shows why cpa qualification is so beautiful because the comp the content which is getting tested is really amazing guys critical thinking is very much demand in demand in the corporates and all right financial data analytics is in demand in the corporates logical thinking financial data data mining financial data analysis data visualization data ethics so these are all good subjects guys digital acumen again this is also being added into the far curriculum so they have removed all unnecessary and unimportant topics from far right or difficult topics of far and have been put into business analysis and reporting so bar exam is just a combination of all tougher concepts have been put into bar right then comes in audit audit also everything remains the same guys they have just added digital acumen again right so audit highly only one or two modules have changed in audit right so digital acumen have been added in audit only one module have been added in far there were three modules added in audit there is only one module which is being added is digital acumen right then comes your regulation in regulation also we have added digital acumen so if you can see that module 1 module 2 methods of taxation is being added module 3 module 4 module 5 module 6 module 7 module 8 s corp c corp corporate taxation everything remains the same guys only the methods of taxation and digital acumen have been added so if you can see that in regulation also they have added technology and digital acumen so your three core parts have not changed substantially guys so what does this tells you is from 1st january 2024 even i mean in this year even if you don't write far audit and reg that is not such a big problem because not many changes have come in this right so far audit and tax the changes are very very less guys the majority of the changes have come in bc which have got split into three parts right so business analysis and reporting and uh, so now we'll go into detail about all these three disciplines which are being added so let's go little slowly in what is business analysis and reporting discipline so what is covered under bar guys so let's see that accounting research not for profit financial statements select financial statements select transactions cost accounting state and local government employee benefit plan planning techniques financial set matlab kitna bhi difficult ho sake wo log sab ne bar mein leke aaya hai so if i am a student i will never ever select bar discipline 
I mean, that's a very bad advice to the students. See, you are free to choose whatever you want. End of the day, we want to pass the exam, guys. So I am telling you on a discipline basis, I would rather not select bar. If you see the topics which have been covered in bar, cost accounting, local governmental accounting, employee benefit plans, financial analysis, select financial statements. So these are very core and difficult topics of bar, right? And then they have added again, advanced data analytics also. Again, advanced critical thinking, all this is being added in bar guys. So business analysis and reporting, if you see that advanced critical thinking, advanced logical thinking, data concepts, data mining, data analysis, data visualization, all 10 modules have been added in bar. Also communicating results, advanced data and ethics, advanced data management and relationship. So if you syllabus, definitely bar as a discipline, mostly many of them will not select. And I would also give you a same recommendation that bar is something you can avoid, right? Let's see information system and controls, IT governance and risk assessments, performing procedures, test of internal controls, more of an extension of audit guys. SOC engagements, use and management of data, information security. So most of IT related part is being covered in the, uh, uh, what you say, information system and controls. If you see that there are only five modules, guys, even the syllabus and the content is also very less. If you see that the chapters which you need to study, the content are also very less in ISC. So if I'm a student, I might select ISC as a discipline because they are giving you a choice, guys. Out of these three, you can select any one. So I might select ISC. Let's see tax compliance planning. If I want to make my career in tax, so let's see advanced tax. Mein kya kya hai. Individual tax planning, acquisition of assets, tax accounting methods, federal taxation of entities, C Corp, S Corp, partnerships, tax planning for entities. So taxation also, if you see that module nine, trust, tax exempt organizations, multi-jurisdiction tax basis, technology, tax research, personal financial advisory services. So there are almost 14 modules in tax. So if you see the content, it's very, very huge in tax. So I think all, out of all the three discipline, information security systems looks to be, a, or information systems looks to be a lesser content. But again, the questions can come extremely tough guys in 2024 curriculum. So this was about a quick overview about CP evaluation 2024, because this session is more of a Q&A. I know that I've taken an, uh, a PPT to explain you. I hope that I have not uh, wasted much of a time because I just wanted to give you a context before you ask questions. At least you understand what it is, right? So let's now put up the question and answers and see what are the questions coming up, right? So. Uh, sir, please explain the 18 months calculation. So Chetan, what happens is, so January, you have written the FAR exam. You have got your results in February. From January, Chetan, you have 18 months of time to pass the other three sections. If you don't pass the other three sections within 18 months, the scores get lapsed. That means the exam which you have passed of FAR also will get cancelled and nullified. You need to write FAR exam again. This 18 months have been changed now, right? So if you are writing exam this year, they are giving an extension of 18 months from December 2023, right? So that is what I would say that, that's how you should calculate your period, okay? So what would you suggest for the students who haven't taken an exam and are recently enrolled with CP exam? Should we wait till 2024 or should they do it? My suggestion would be that you should enroll for CP as soon as possible. Because in new syllabus, you don't know how they will ask the questions, guys. So my request would be that you enroll immediately either with Samandar or any institute for that matter and pass the exam faster. Because from 1st January 2024, especially BEC will get extremely tough, right? The disciplines and all, how they will ask the questions in discipline, we are not aware of that. So my recommendation would be at least BEC exam, you should enroll and try to target and finish up BC and audit exam this year and FAR and REC exam you can write next year. So this would be my strategy for the people who have not enrolled or who have enrolled recently to at least give BC and audit because these are the two subjects which can get significantly changed from next year, right? So these are the two subjects which you should knock off is what would be my advice.